Well, good hump day afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great, great day. Um, I've got Dan Salio and Philly 500 in about 45 minutes. And I've got something special here because last week we challenged Philly 500. Okay. And here we go, Philly 500. I'll be wearing this shirt today uh, as we entertain the uh, Philly 500 and crew um, and see if he's still scared to go to Dallas. Um, I'm actually working on that. I want this to be a Joe Boo Sports big event. I hope you guys will be there. Uh, Leo is planning on going. Game Time Brian's planning on going, and so on. The question is, will you be going? And we're going to start working on that uh, sooner than later because I'm definitely saving my pennies up to have it make sure that, that we have a ball there. Um, right now, the Cowboys are sitting on the sidelines. We don't know doing what. You know, I, I'm scared to make moves and things. And we hear, of course, that Zach Martin is talking about um, – possibly this being his last year and as we know that if the Cowboys are hitting the reset button that Dak Prescott his cap number for next year is 40 million dollars 40 million dollars to not be on the team but here's the thing let me pop this up here here's the thing that's crazy though I don't think people seem to understand because see people are saying well you know it's probably going to be Demarcus Lawrence's last year too what you notice up here in the corners, you'll see on the base salary, it says void, void, void. We have four voidable years on contracts. That's basically where they've just dumped money down the road to get cap relief in past years. Dak Prescott, of course, is the big one at $40 million, right? Um, that's his cap number. Demarcus Lawrence's cap number is 7.4. And if he is not on the roster, that's the number that you're going to pay. Um, Zach Martin, though, here's where it gets to be crazy. Zach Martin's number is 10.6, which isn't so bad. But if he retires, you see that cap number, don't you? We take a $26 million cap hit. $26 million versus the $10 million if he's on the roster there. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Also, we have Brandon Cooks, who's $4 million. Uh, You can absorb that. Here's the problem. As it currently stands, and this is the reason that I'm going to give you that you've got to sign Dak Prescott. If Zach Martin is going to retire, that means of the $65 million cap space that you have, take off another sixteen. That drops you to $49 million. The $49 million, 40 of which, $40 million is money that you're paying for Dak not to be here. Just are. That's not good because you're probably going to have to pay Trey Lance more money. You still got Diggs. I'm sorry, not Diggs. Um, C.D. Lamb and Micah. And what's going to be interesting to me is, are they going to pay Micah early? Or are they going to do like they've done with everybody else? Wait till they get to the last year of their deal before they pay him quite honestly for the cowboys his cap number this year is five million dollars if you do his deal this year his number is going to go up this year and of course next year next year's cap number is like 21 million it behoove you to actually wait till next year to do that deal if you can keep him happy but it doesn't seem like he's going to be happy so here's the thing here's the thing with that 40 million dollar cap number you could get Dak Prescott under contract and have less of a cap hit and get yourself some more money. And you're saying, well, what are you talking about? Right now, his cap number is 55. Well, you basically are going to eat that for this year and, and, and get rid of that. But you could make that cap number no worse than 40. And if we use Joe Burrow... Let's just use Joe Burrow as a measuring stick because at the moment he is the highest paid out there. Okay, he got his deal last year that was at fifty-five million, and um, the days of contracts for you know 
good quarterbacks under fifty million dollars are gone. That's gone. You're not seeing guys at forty, so forget about even getting that. So here's where it's interesting to me because Joe Burrow, for example, last year's cap number was nineteen million. Now understand he signed a contract here that was two hundred and seventy five million dollars that averages fifty five million a year that has hundred and forty six million fully guaranteed. Wow. But his cap number last year was 19. This year, it's only 29. 11% of the team's cap. 2025, next year, it's at 46. Which, from where I'm standing, 46 even sounds like a bargain compared to the 55 that we're playing Dak this year. 26, it's 48 million. 48 million. And 52 in 2027 if let's say hypothetically you did the deal kind of like this okay you eat the 55 this year you put the 40 you know you you spread that out in here with these you could end up with about 29 million dollar cap hit for next year oh in which case that's another 10 million dollars you could actually add to the cap And not have to look at bringing in another quarterback. Because you don't want to pay Dak Prescott $40 million not to be here. And then, if Trey Lance isn't the guy, then you're going to have to bring another quarterback in here. And even if it's a journeyman, let's say it's Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is 45 right now. Derek Carr, he's like 40. So you're going to spend another 40 on top of the 40 for Dak? That's eight. That's no you're better off keeping the guy that's good. Now, Rich Eisen, shout out to Rich Eisen, talks about Tua. Because Tua, you know, some people will say, well, Tua's not as good as Joe Burrow or some of these other guys. Well, Tua is looking to get a contract like Jared Goff. We started the show by who's not there in Dallas. Uh, C.D. Lamb, he's, uh, he wants a contract. He's not getting it. Somebody else got pizzayed just yesterday. His name's Justin Jefferson. Um, he's got $110 million guaranteed wow. on his contract. That's $10 million more than the guy who threw him the, uh, uh, the ball last year. His name is Kirk Cousins. He's a quarterback. He's being paid better than a quarterback in the NFL right now. And um, I guess CD is like, uh, hey, uh, if I'm not uh, on the dotted line, I'm not showing up. Some guys have that opinion, and uh, I get it. Totally understand that. Uh, other guys who are expecting a contract, um, seen others getting paid, um, sometimes will show up. One of them is named Tua Tungo Vailoa. He's in line to get paid. I told you he's going to get a contract that starts with a five. He will have an annual salary that's in the $50 million range. Tom Pelissero last week came here on Friday said no quarterback that signs now is going to be in a $40 million club anymore. $50 million. Bucks. Jared Goff and his latest contract set the market on that front as well. And the, um, the Lions got in earlier than others. Why let Tua set the market? Why let the Dolphins set your market if you're the Lions? Set it yourself. So Tua was asked today... If the, in his mind, the Jared Goff contract is in fact a market setter for him and his agent to top. Do you view those numbers that others get around the league as benchmarks for your negotiations like Jared Goff getting 53 for you? Well, I'll tell you one thing. The market is the market. If we didn't have a market, then market none is of a market. that would matter. It'd just be an organizational uh, thing, you know? Didn't matter if that guy got paid that because it's up to the organization. So that's what I would say. The market is the market. That's it. Are you confident that a deal will get done before training camp? Uh, I'm confident that a deal will get done. Um, but then again, it's not in my control. Um, you know, it's it's really up to both sides meeting in the middle with this. Mm. There you go. Both sides meeting in the middle. All right. So how would he term it? We're looking for adjectives to him. We're looking for adjectives. How would you term your mood or your... Uh, I guess belief in all of this happening. Your disposition, great word. (laughs) You. 
level of concern. Hmm. How would you term it? We want a word. I want an adjective. We need a thesaurus, a two a thesaurus, a two a thesaurus. <laughs> okay, we need a two a thesaurus, a two a thesaurus, an adjective to describe how you're feeling about this whole thing. Tua, and here is that exchange. Frustrated where, where things stand right now? Uh, not frustrated. Um, I'm, I'm another word, but oh. yeah. Agitated, annoyed, bothered. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How about that pause? <laughs> um, just, just wanted to get something done. That's it. Just wanted to get something done. What was your reaction to seeing Jalen? Or go ahead, Al. Concerned? Is that? <laughs> not concerned. Concerned's not the right word. That's way off from the word. Yeah, um, answer maybe. Probably antsy. Yeah. 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 That's what we're doing. <laughs> I wouldn't say pissed off. I mean, this is, uh, this is the nature of the beast, right? This is how it goes. He almost it went with it is what it is. I think he was right there. I think he was right there. He walked right up to the line of it is what it is, which is definitely an indication of frustration. When you go it is what it is, you're just oh, trying yeah. to get out of it. Yep. He also did, in fact, um, pause when I think the word agitated was thrown out there by a member of the media. Annoyed, agitated. Yeah, that guy was on it. Salty. Peppered him with, uh, and that's when words, Tua yeah. paused. That's when he paused. Mm. You know? So, I mean... There you have it. There's no longer quarterbacks that are under the 50 million mark. That's just the way it is. And this is the way that the Cowboys can get Dak Prescott squared away. <clears throat> They're going to have... You know, you people will say... <coughs> the Cowboys are reloading, uh, hitting the eject button, whatever. You don't get rid of players that are top of the NFL. I don't see anybody who has an all-pro wide receiver that's trying to get his second contract that they let him go. I don't see teams that end up having a runner-up quarterback for MVP just jettisoning them. And I don't see a generational talented edge rusher um, being not re-signed. So, you know, you can say some of these guys... D-Law, maybe Zach Martin, Brandon Cooks. Yeah, maybe those guys go. But in today's day and age, with the way the Cowboys draft, you're still looking at a team that's really good. All right, guys, I will see you all in a bit with the Dan Salio show, where, you know, I literally get jumped and mugged. Peace out.